Lamentations chapter 4 The Attitude of Unbelief How is the gold become dim? How is the most fine gold changed? The stones of the sanctuary are poured out in the top of the street. There was gold left behind. It wasn't bright and shiny. It became dirty and filthy. The precious sons of Zion, the children, compa uh, comparable to fine gold, they were worth something. How are they esteemed as earthen pitchers? Compare gold to a clay pot. You're not going to get anything for a clay pot. A few, a few dollars. But what was fine gold, vessels of, of honor, vessels of, of to be clean, vessels of to be brought up for special occasions, vessels that were for God, are now just earthen pitchers. It's what we are. The Bible says that we're just clay pots that God can use. The work of, of the hands of the potter. And we saw the potter in the work with Jeremiah. God is the potter and we're the work of his hands. But even Judah now, they're, they're destroyed. They're desolation. They're, they've been punished for their sin. What can God do with them right now? Absolutely nothing right now. He said 70 years. When God says 70 years, it's going to be 70 years. Even the sea monsters draw out the breath. They give suck to their young ones. Now, as far as I know, the only animal that would be to this verse would be a whale. And yet, when you read commentary, they will tell you in their infinite stupidity, a dog. I've seen it. Looking this verse up, they'll say it's dog. That's what they say. It's it's absolutely it's it's comical. See, you can't believe it's a whale because to them a whale is not a fish, even though Jesus said it's a fish because God said I prepared a great fish. Jesus said in the belly of the whale, and Lamentations backs up God and Jesus Christ. But we can't believe them. But that's not what we're talking about. But that's just an interesting little thing. And what the, what the reference Jeremiah is writing here is, it says they give suck to their young ones. A whale will give milk to her baby whale. The daughter of my people is become cruel. There is no milk to give to the children. A whale mommy will feed her whale baby. And yet, the mothers of Jerusalem... The mothers of Judah cannot feed their children. Like ostriches in the wilderness. Now as far as that statement itself, I can't tell you about an ostrich in the wilderness. I don't know much about... That's what some of the things are, but it's not the eggs. It's talking about the wilderness. I looked up eggs, and it dawned on me it has nothing to do with eggs. It says the ostrich in the wilderness herself. But the subject is children because the tongue of the suckling child cleaveth to the roof of her mouth. And if it is talking about those eggs, it's a mother who is leaving her children behind. Unable to care for them. And, hey, I gave birth to you. Take care of yourself. Sea turtles do that. They come in, they bury them, and they go back out to sea. Only man will protect him. The tongue of the suckling child cleaveth to the roof of his mouth for thirst. He has no milk. His mother is not providing for her. And he says, even if sea monsters throw out the breath. What he's saying, listen, right now a baby whale is being fed. And you can't even feed your child. An ostrich has left, left her eggs in the ground. You just left your children behind. And we're even going to get even more gross detail. The young children ask bread, and no man breaketh it unto them. And I believe Matthew 7, 9 says, you know, if, if a child will ask for bread, will you give him a serpent? 
I believe that's I got Matthew seven nine. But I do know place Jesus said, you know, your son asked for a for bread, will you give him a serpent? Here the children are asking for bread, and no one's giving it to him. Because we've already read, there is no bread. The children are dying of famine. And we'll see that later too. They that did feed delicately. That's that's the rich. They had all the good food. They had the fancy tables. They had the, the 14 forks and the 13 spoons. And you had to have the napkin the right way. And you had to serve it the right way. And all kinds of knives and blah, 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 blah. Are desolate in the streets. You know, they had the right clothes. They had the right food. They had the right speech. They had the right, right. And now they're in the streets. All the homes have been burned. All the places have been destroyed in, in Jeremiah's town. Even the rich places. And you wouldn't see this delicate person in the streets. They would have a handmaid go get their water. A servant to go get their groceries. You wouldn't see them on the streets and here they are. They that brought up in scarlet. Rich. Red, scarlet, and purple were valuable money items. That's why you know Mary is not that Roman Catholic Mary, the Bible, because she, she wears in the church a purple. It's something with the dye of red and purple you and stream blue. It was very expensive. Now they're embracing dunghill, sewer place. What a fall. What a collapse. And that dung hills that probably are their valuable stuff that is left. But I'm adding to it. For the punishment of the iniquity of the daughter of my people is greater than the punishment of the sin of Sodom that was overthrown as in a moment and no hand stayed on it. So God tells us that destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah was a moment. 60 seconds. Yet Jerusalem got worse. Why? Because they're God's people. Why? Because God gave them the word. Why? God gave them the instructions. God gave them the law. God gave them prophets. God gave them a warning. You know, even Sodom and Gomorrah had a warning, had a prophet. Who was he? Lot. Then he go tell his family. Angels just told me they're going to overthrow. And they laughed at him. Sodom and Gomorrah had a witness before they were destroyed. Lot went and told somebody. And what's the Bible say about that man? Just Lot. I don't mean just Lot because his two daughters got out. That guy sold witness. <laughs> that guy witnessed to people about the judgment of God. Even in a bad condition, backsliding condition, he witnessed and told people. Her Nazarite were purer than snow. They were whiter than milk. What is the whitest thing you can find in this earth as natural? Milk and snow. Without the touch of man. Alright, you get the snow plows out, you get your you let your dog out, and then the snow becomes polluted. But you get snow that's in a field where there's no animals and no man. And you let the let the sun shine upon it. It's beautiful. And milk, white, clean, pure. They were more ruddy in body than rubies. And that ruddy was also, I believe, the description of David. Their polishing was of sapphire. They were fine. They were handsome men. Devoted their lives to God as the law prescribed. Their visage, that's what they look like, is blacker than coal. They're filthy now. They're dirty. They're vile. They are not known in the streets. You can't even tell who they are. You know, when you have areas that volcanic uh, has erupted 
and the ash. You can't tell who the people are. Once they get covered with that dust, you almost can't tell what sex they are. You look at them, you don't know who they are. It could be your husband, you, unless he spoke. Unless she spoke. Unless your child spoke. You just look at They could be any other child. You know what sin will do to you when, when judgment comes? It will make it look like anybody else. For all have sinned. They are not known in the streets. Their skin cleaveth to their bones. You ever see anybody you can see their bones and count their ribs? They haven't been eating. It is withered. Not healthy skin. It has become like a stick. A stick figure. That's where you get your stick figure from. Why do you draw a guy with, with, with lines and say, hey, okay, he's a person? Because the King James Bible says stick figure. They that be slain with the sword are better than they that be slain with hunger. I read a quick death. Hunger drags out. For these pine away. Very slowly die. Stricken through stricken through for want of the field, field yeah, a want of the fruit to the field. They want vegetables. They want fruit. And they're not getting it been destroyed even what has been left over for the rich I mean for the poor the land at Babylon left it's not enough to feed the people the hands of the pitiful woman it's not how we use the word pitiful that you know it's just she's a very delicate lovable sweet kind of creature woman Just knows how to take care of her home. Has sodden. That means you have put your food into uh, a liquid. And boiled their own children. Second Kings 16 3, 23 10, Second Chronicles 33 6, Ezekiel 16.21. There may be a time in America you won't have to worry about abortion. You'll wait for that baby to be born so you can eat it. There's a religion out there that says that if you eat a Jewish man, you can be saved. If you drink a Jewish man's blood, you can be saved. Well, what is new? A couple of little magic hocus pocus and, and you're, you're eating flesh. They, the children, were their meat in the destruction of the daughter of my people. You don't know what you'll do when you'll face hard times. You better, oh, I'll die for Jesus. I'll, you know, I'll suffer for the Bible. You don't know what you're going to do, and I don't know what I'm going to do. What did Job, uh, what did, what did, did Satan say to God about Job and man, all that he has? I, I forget the rest of it. Let me try to quote the verse. You know, there are mothers today, I'm sorry to say, if they have the opportunity, they'll eat their own children, wouldn't even care. Because they don't care about the children. Children today are a nuisance. They're a hindrance. Why not just eat them? The Lord has accomplished his fury. He has poured out his fierce anger and has kindled a fire in Zion and has devoured the foundations thereof. The kings of the earth and all the inhabitants of the world would not have believed that the adversary and the enemy should have entered into the gates of Jerusalem. And yet God allowed it because of, listen, it wasn't God that allowed the enemy in. It wasn't God that allowed the adversary in. You need to read a book, Holy War, by uh, uh, Pastor Bunyan, John Bunyan. The people let the adversary, Satan, in the city and lock God out. The Holy War is a great book to study and to read when, when it's something like what's going on with Jerusalem today. They allowed Satan in and threw God out. 
And they were angry when Jesus came into the city to defend the city, to go to the cross and die for him, that they said, crucify him. But we'll take Barabbas the crook. We'll take Barabbas the murderer. We'll take Barabbas the man and reject the God-man. For the sins of her prophets. We want a revival in America. For what prophets and, and priests and uh, preachers and whatever you want, reverends and whatever you got in pulpits in, the, in America today. Do you know what's going to happen to America today? Is because the men and women behind the pulpits, behind the podium, behind the glass, whatever you want to call it. I'm listening to a guy right now about evolution. He's got great information and facts about evolution. But he, he has the people very weak. You know, just turn your, your, your papers over and, and quote from this Bible verse. You don't have to bring your Bible. And then when he quotes the verse, it's not even the King James Bible. That's a false prophet here. How do you say false prophet? He's not quoting the word of God as he should. That's false. For the sins of the prophets and iniquities of her priests. The priests in Jeremiah's time, most of the priests to the to Second Kings and Judah, I mean uh, Chronicles, were not doing what they were supposed to be doing. And then you had false priests of Baal. Jezebel had her had eight hundred of them. That have shed the blood of the just in the midst of her. They were murdering. They wanted to. What, Jeremiah was what? Je, Jeremiah 1.1. 1, 1, he was of the priests of the Levites. His city. I forget the name of it now. Uh, his own people wanted him dead. Jesus said, if you look upon a woman and lust after her in your heart, you've already committed adultery with her. You don't have to do the act. Just thinking about killing them. They're guilty of killing Jeremiah. And they're killing the just people. Even Jesus said that from the blood of Abel to the, to the blood of uh, Zach. I forget the name too. I apologize. There has been murdering of God's people all through the Old Testament. Abel being the first one that stood for God was killed. They have wandered as blind men in the street. Oh, I'm going. Oh, I don't know where I'm going. They have polluted themselves with blood, murder, false sacrificing. Bringing the wrong sacrifice to God. They even talk about one of the prophets talks about eating swine's blood. As a Jew, bringing probably blood of their, their children, their sons and daughters, Oh, you know why they were eating their children? Because they were taking the blood of the children and giving them to Moloch. You want to give your children to a false god? By killing them? I'll tell you exactly what you're going to do. You're going to kill your own children and you're going to eat them. Forget giving them to that statue down there and burn. You're going to put them in a bucket of water and boil them. Now, you'll reap what you sow. You can't say, oh, how bad God is. No, how bad the people are. What were they doing with their children? What were they doing with the people of God? Slaying them, killing them, murdering them. So that man could not touch their garments. They cried unto them, depart ye. It is unclean. Depart, depart. Touch not. When they fled away and, and wandered, they said among the heathen, they shall no more sojourn there. The anger of the Lord has devoured, divided them. They're here, there, and everywhere. They're in Edom. They're in Moab. They're in Egypt. They're in Babylon. They've run all over. He will no more regard them. They respected not the persons of the priests. Some priests were doing right. They, they favored not the elders. There were some elders that were doing right. As for us, our eyes 
as yet failed for our vain help. They look to man and not to God. They look to the armies rather than God. In our watchings, we have watched for a nation that could not save us. Egypt. The Assyrians. Everybody they called on gave money to throughout the second kings, throughout the kings of, the, of Judah, calling upon nations. Come help us. Here, let's strip off the gold off the door of the house. Remember that? Of the temple. And we'll pay them with that. They hunt our steps. They that we cannot ugh, that we cannot go in our streets. They're watching for them. They've got a target upon them. Our end is near. Our days are fulfilled. For our end is come. That's what it feels like then. But this is it. We're done. We can't even walk in the streets of Jerusalem. And that's happened today. You know, anywhere in those nations right now, including Israel, you can go sit down in a cafe and have, you know, with your wife and your children, have a cup of coffee, latte, let them get a Pepsi, or whatever. You could be sitting at the table just looking at, you know, wow, this is this is the place where Jesus walked and then camels. Wow, I've never seen camels in, in the marketplace. They got that stuff to selling out of them. Boom! What was that? Well, somebody had a bomb strapped to their belly button. Man, I just I just gave that waiter a tip and all that. Now he's all over the road. You know, their kids over there carry AK-7s to school. Our persecutors are swifter than the eagles of, he of the heaven. An eagle will travel 100 to 150, 150 miles per an hour. And 150 miles per hour is when he goes in a dive because he sees food. Whatever he does with those wings, he just dives to that mouse, to that rat. Whatever it is he wants, he goes to 150 miles per hour. They pursue us upon the mountain. So we run to the mountain. That's one of the places they were trying to find God's. They lay wait for us in the wilderness. They where the ostriches are. Wilderness, there's nothing there. There's nothing growing. There's no one living. There's nothing that can provide. But God, he ain't providing for them there. The breath of our nostrils, the anointed of the Lord. We're the anointed of the Lord, the Jews, was taken in their pits. Of whom we said, under his shadow we shall live among the heathen. Not where God told them to live. He told them to live in the land. He told them once you get in the land, get rid of them heathen. Rejoice and be glad, old daughter of Edom. That's the enemy. And dwell within the land of Uz. That's where Job was. The cup also shall pass through, uh, through unto thee. Thou shalt be drunken and shalt make thyself naked. And like I said, I believe it's uh, Obadiah speaks against Edom. They turned their back on Israel when Babylon came in. They even gathered them up and brought them to Babylon. And what Jeremiah is saying now, listen, you guys are laughing right now. You're having a party right now. You're having a celebration. But you better be sure of one thing. That cup is going to come into your hand. And you're going to drink it. You think we suffered? You wait till you drink that cup. The punishment of thy iniquity is accomplished, O daughter of Zion. God, all right, I'm done spanking you. You got 70 years, but I'm done spanking you. The spanking's over. Lamentations is Jeremiah looking at the city, what it is, and the city is rubbing her buttocks. Oh, her. Ow. The guy's like, the rod is hanging wherever God hangs the rod or wherever he puts that rod. That's some lesson to learn about sin, isn't it? How serious, you know, God hates the sin, uh, loves, uh, loves the sin like that. To me, it looks like the sinner and the sin, the sin was both judged. God destroyed his people, his place on this earth of all the places on the earth. 
O Lord of Zion, he will no more carry thee away into captivity for this sin. Now we're not talking about the sin of Jesus' time. Because they'll come back after 70 years and get right and then get wrong again. They didn't learn their lesson. But let's look at this captivity. This is because of the, the, the false worship, the idolatry and all that. God is done with them right now. Later on with Jesus and rejecting Jesus, that's another time. But we're looking at right now in Jeremiah's time. God says, you've already been punished. You're done. You'll be 70 years out of the land, but you're coming back. I'll take care of you. You'll build the temple again. You'll build your homes. You'll build the wall. He will visit their iniquity. Old daughter Edom, he will discover thy sin. But when God shows his love back to us again and his mercy for us to come back, Edom, you better watch out. You better not pout because God's going to get you. And it comes down to another lesson again to screw up since Genesis 12. You better watch out how you treat that Jew. Bear what what you say about that Jew. Even in their sin, even in wickedness, even rejection of Jesus Christ as their Savior, they are, as a corporate people, they are God's people. No rest, no shadow of a doubt beyond that. Better be careful. And Jeremiah is warning Edom. Better be careful. Actually, they already blew it. There's no hope. Read them. God already said, I will curse them that curse you. 